Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Willie Jolly and Sissy. And we say greetings on this beautiful evening. And we hope you're all doing well wherever you may be around the world. We are grateful for those who are just joining us for the first time time. You might not know who we are, our background. We are the Jollies. I'm Dr. Willie Jolly, and this is Dee Taylor Jolly, my beautiful bride. We're the authors of the book, Make Love. Make money. Make it last. 10 Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. We've been married as of June 28th, which was just about two weeks ago. Uh, We've been married for 38 years. Haven't had an argument in over 35 years. And we still got the hots for each other. I still think she is cute and hot. She says the right things. And turns me on. So we- Keep me around. Well, if that's what it takes to keep you around, I'll do that. Because you- I want your hair. Well, your hair is different every week. Everybody- No, it's just really crazy. That's because we were on vacation. Yeah, we were out of- A day, a day. What about a day vacation? We were on a day- Family reunion. A family reunion day vacation and we were just kind of grooving coming back home uh from charlottesville virginia haven't been able to go for a couple years so anyway welcome everybody we're going to talk tonight about the situation that somebody sent a letter to which was oh so uh, apropos because we went to a family reunion today in charlottesville. i mean charlottesville on sunday the family reunion is held on the second sunday it's called St. John Church. It was the church when our great, great grandfather was one of the founding members of Pleasant Ragland back in the 1800s. And he, he uh, was one of the founding members of this, this church in Keswick, Virginia. And then my, my grandmother, my mother, my brother and I all used to go there every summer. We would come back to the church second Sunday in July for the family, or they call it the homecoming, mm-hmm. and they have a service and then have a big old meal with fried chicken and all the other things. And then they'd have a revival that evening. They used to have it in the afternoon, but now they have it at night. Oh, okay. But they did, they did it at night. And um, so we, we have not been able to go. We didn't go last year and the year before because of COVID. It's been a couple of years, a number of years, three or four years since we've been. So it was great to go back. I, I, they they invited me to come up and say a few words and sing a song, which I am grateful and honored to do every year. My mother, my father, and my grandmother are buried in the family plot. And so it was on, uh, good to go back and lay flowers on that. And, uh, on those. So how places. are you always gracious? in all conversations with people when they say, what are you doing? Where did I see you last? But they always say, I saw you on TV. I saw you on the Today Show. I hear you every morning. Do they all like you? Do my family members like me? We went to the family. Yeah. I just said, you said, do they all like you? They seem to. Now, I don't know, but they seem to. They seem to be proud of me, okay? They seem to be proud of what I've accomplished and what I have been able to, this little guy who was running around breaking doors and being just a terror as a child has grown up to be somewhat successful. So More responsible. Yes. So they, they seem to like, now we are good. Okay. First of all, we want to say every family, we get notes from people saying, I don't get along with my in-laws or my family members, or I have to go to this family reunion and I don't want to go if I don't like my husband's family. We don't have that issue. Okay, just so you know, this is not something we're going to give you anything from personal experience because I love my brother-in-law. I loved your mom and dad, your cousins. They treated my family like family. I have nothing but love for them. I, I hit the lottery when I married into her family. On, on the other hand, she uh, on the other side, she loved my mom, easygoing. They were all very great. Brother. They still are. They yes. Sweet people. All right, but so here, but here's the thing. I think that as you deal with how do you avoid conflict in family unions and family drama, part of it I think is what you bring to the table. We're I agree. Gracious, we are gracious and kind and 
thankful and yet always prepared. I used to have a couple of fam- my own family who were a bit challenged at the space that I find myself in mm-hmm. because it can be deceiving. It looks like, oh, you travel, you do these. Well, well, how do you have time? What do you do? Do you work anyway? I can't lie. You anymore. got that. You, I mean, you did get that. <laughs> not, not from this particular family, but I get well, From your family. What do you do? Do you do anything? <laughs> <laughs> so I used to raise the hair on the back of my neck. I'm like, oh, they have no clue. No, I don't, depending upon who it, no, not really. I'm just eye candy. <laughs> and then I laugh. But we have, you know, just some strategies. How, what what they want to do is to get familiar. And I do understand. So what happens, that. though, when you have a family situation, your spouse, family, or an extended family? I'm going to take it somewhere. And, and you're the only one who can really talk about this. Going to North Carolina. Okay, okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So you weren't an uncomfortable situation. It was uncomfortable. We are a blended family. Yes. And okay. and I would travel with him that I didn't want to go. My mother said, Okay, you are going because you're his spouse and you must support him. So I had to get myself together. It was an uncomfortable situation. So why was it uncomfortable though? i I want them to get the fullness of it. When I walked in the room Oh, they all spoke to you. When you walked in a room. Well, I walked in after you that I didn't exist. You were like a plant. Uh, well, no, I just simply did not exist. I was not there. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. They didn't speak. They didn't mm-hmm. say hello. Mm-hmm. Well, if they said hello, it was just a. Well, no, they did not say hello. So mm-hmm. so how did you handle that? I understood. And, and I was very pleasant. I took my seat and, and I watched the activities. And I. And I had a, not a smile on my face, but I was very pleasant because, because I, I understood. And what did I understand? They were not pleased because you did not marry their granddaughter's mother. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So I, I get that. And I got a good catch. So I can see that they were- I ended up marrying you when right. I had a child. And, and, and I can see that why they were not happy. So mm-hmm. I didn't need to be upset because I had already gotten what they wanted. So I could be gracious. So the key, so that's how, so I, the key I, is how to you, be gracious. The key is, Even in un The key di- is difficult. first, you have to look at the situation from their perspective. That's what I think. That has always been very helpful for me. Cla- uh, Terrence just said, I can never understand why someone... How it is that someone who doesn't know you? Why did you move this? this oh, oh, I, I was trying to say uh, he someone who it. doesn't know you, disliking you, and doesn't know you, which is perplexing. Well, it's not that it really is. It wasn't her. I mean, in the personhood, it could have been anybody, any other woman other than the mother of my daughter, and it could have been uncomfortable. D was from a family of people who tell you to be kind and gracious. Her mother was gracious to everybody. To everybody. And you know what, what happens is, that's the whole thing, the easy thing of kill them with kindness. So they might be ignored and not, and not, and not like me. And sometimes because of all the things that we do in places that, that, that we go to, I learn that they look at you and the expression on your face and draw conclusions. Okay. And your facial expression may not have anything to do with what you're really feeling. So sometimes the scowl, you might be thinking something else, but they will interpret it based upon their experience. Right. That just happens. So I've learned to keep a neutral or a pleasant expression at all times. And that's when we talk about when we talk about presentation skills and and, and making yourself approachable. I I had to learn that. I wanted to be approachable, but if I had a scowl on my face, people would think, oh, they they shouldn't like me. Right. They they would take that as a negative. Uh, The answer is uh, Ms. Baxter, no. She had no other children, um, um, except my daughter. 
And so, but you know what? It, it, let me tell you, that was early on. Over time, it evolved. And uh, we became all became good because we did not overreact. And that's what I want to say to everybody. E initially, it was very uncomfortable the first time we went there. But I had to, somebody has to take the high road. Right. It's not, it's and, not right. It's, it's, it, it's not fair. But as a mature person, and do I, do I have to talk myself through this? Because I, I got an attitude just like everybody else. That, that was not. But you heard your mama result. in your, you yeah. heard your mama in your ear. Yeah. Be gracious. Be gracious. Be, be kind. Be, be kind. Be kind. Be, be gracious. You have, you have nothing to gain right. by, by being annoyed and upset. Having drama. No, right. no. We, right. Look, we have made a decision early on in our marriage that we're not going to have drama. We have no drama zones in our, in our marriage. And so this is important that you make that decision. Yeah, you, you're going to get your, you know, getting your feelings, as they say. We, we, we both have an issue with that. Getting your feelings. Well, you got to get over getting in your feelings and say, Well, you have to then I'm be decided instead of that we want to encourage people to when you say I'm in my feelings, you have to identify right, that's the what thing. the feeling, feeling is, is so you then can handle the feeling. Right. Rather than say in my feelings, what is that specific? Are you are you angry? Mm -hmm. Are are you afraid that they won't like you? Why does that matter that they should like you? Um, how do you rise above it? It's just like my mother would always say, you know, little people talk about other people. Medium-sized people talk about things, and big people talk about ideas. So where are you going to sit? And that's a choice, folks. Uh, in the one-man show, I talk about that it is about your attitude, which is your choice. That is a choice you have every day. You choose every day which string you, which strings you're going to play on. And you all have got a certain amount of strings, and those strings are your attitude. What's going to happen? How is it going to impact you? How are you going to respond? Not react. Let me say that again. How are you going to respond in uncomfortable situations, not react to uncomfortable situations? What's the difference? To respond is positive. To react is negative. If you were given some medication and you had a reaction, you know already that is negative. It's not good. But if you responded to the medication, that's positive. That is what you have to make the decision. So as you go into these situation for the person who sent us the note about uh, not really liking their in-laws and their family and we're going to family is very uncomfortable because one, one of the letters was she was the second wife remember we got one letter like that she was the second wife they liked the first wife now, for whatever the reason the first wife and the husband broke up she was the second wife they did not like her now they, we don't know why they did it. We didn't. We didn't get that part. We didn't get that. We don't know if the second wife broke up the first. We no. don't. We don't know any. We of don't that. know. Now, and let's assume they did not. Let's just make that assumption, okay? That they they did. Well, that's the harder one. That they did. Okay, let's go with that. That they did. Even then, she is in a situation now where she has to be gracious. She has to be kind. If they're not kind of her, they she cannot respond. She cannot well, react. They, like I said, to understand, put yourself in the sho in the shoes of, of the other family. Can you see why they might not like you? <laughs> huh? what, what? said, "Well, it, what what if you could go to the family reunion, listen to the music, eat all the food, and leave pleasantly?" <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I like that. One. Yeah. Uh, I I like that one, Terrence. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. There's a book that uh, Terrence just referenced. Uh, uh, everything you need to know to be successful in life, you learn in kindergarten. Be kind to people. Play in the sandbox. To be open and pleasant to others. But you I don't have to like, always have your way. Okay? But our feelings get in the way. So here's what I would say. All right, what do you say? Because you got some good. I know oh, you're. Well, just kind right. of think, We're probably not going to get through all of this experience. tonight. Yes, we are. We're going to get through this part. All right, go ahead. Yeah, okay, all, all right. right. Okay. So. Creating a positive or harmonious experience in terms of, of, of reunions and relationships. Something easy we can all do. We can smile. Boom, smile. You can smile. If you got 32, at 22, least, or two, smile. When you're coming in, because I had to read books on how to network. Right. That didn't come naturally. That did not come naturally. And some of these tech and techniques and things that I learned 
are applicable in any kind of situation that you find yourself in where you've got to interact with people that you don't really know. Right. And that you're uncomfortable with. Right. So smile, at least put a pleasant expression on your face when you enter, because everybody's looking and, and, and questioning, well, who is this person? Right. And, and are they approachable? Right. But if you have a pleasant expression on your face, then, oh, I can go and at least say hello. Pleasant expression, you know, say hello. Right. 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 And then I, I had, you know, be respectful and include now respectful just simply says, you know, how how are you? Oh, it's good, it's good to to see, meet you. Good meet to you, see, see you. you. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you're and well. Always and then always have a question right. ready to ask. And you say, well, That's what good, Dee. That? That's very Why good. Why do you want to have a question? Because you want to put the responsibility on them. You want them to talk. That's how you learn about people, right? right? Uh, Brenda, people Brenda said, love. "Them not liking you is their problem. Overcome evil, you overcome it with good. Amen. Be kind to others. That's right." Amen. Amen. <laughs> Terrence said, "We're the bacon. <laughs> Show me where the bacon." So you have to have. I had to learn a couple of what they call open-ended questions. Hmm. Mm. You know, it's good to see you. What part of the family are you in? Hmm open-ended question to get them to talk right. people like talk about themselves that's right the best conversation and that's right when you talk about yourself they're learning or you're learning about them and then you can ask another question as you quickly glance from you know there, there's systems for how this thing works right. right so if you're focused on them then you don't have time to be antsy right 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 so you're initiating and really controlling the situation. And then from there, you've got what we call uh, active listening, not aggressive, because aggressive listening is suggesting that you're going right. to interface. But active listening is saying, hmm, you, you, you're listening to find something where you can then ask them another related question to keep them talking. About until, themselves yes, and about their family and yes, about their perspective. Yes. So people like to talk about themselves and hear themselves talk. Yes. So you keep asking questions. Yes. You, you, oh, really? Well, how did that happen? Exactly. Oh, really? Whoa, whoa. And be engaged. Engaged. You know, we can win them over with kindness. Okay, win them over. Now, I'm going to give you a story, though. Here's a story. Um, Terrence has practiced the pain. Um, my father-in-law, her dad, was a pastor. And when I first came, he wasn't feeling me at all. Okay, not at all. Coming down here to bring down to visit his daughter. Oh no, he wasn't feeling it at all. And he was he was not a warm and fuzzy kind of guy anyway. Okay. He was a very he was an introvert. He was a he was a quiet gentleman until he got up to preach and then he would turn it on. But he was pretty quiet. But he was, I, there was nothing going on. Well, I, you know, hello to him, hello. And, but her mother was effusive. Oh, hey, baby, hey, baby, hey, baby. Anyway, but here's what I did. I was respectful. I was gracious. I knew there wasn't nothing going on with him making me feel like I'm at home. But that evening, it was a Saturday. I went into his study because I have a theology degree and I started looking at some of his theological books. And he came in as I was looking at the books. And he said, why are you looking at the theological books? I said, well, I have a degree in theology. He said, you have a degree in theology? I said, yes, sir. I have a master's degree in theology. Uh, and uh, I just chose not to become a pastor, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person who feels I have a ministry. And he said, really? And that's when we started talking. And from that night, for the next what? He died when we, we had been married. Mm, let's see, 2003. We got married in uh, 85. 85 for the next almost 20 years, 18 years. He and I were like this. Okay, we were good, good Yes, kids. do that, Terrence. How do you feel about me crashing itself. your family reunion, selling your book, just asking? <laughs> I think that'd be good, Terrence. All family, not just our family, everybody's yeah. family reunion. Terrence, you're crashing and sell our marriage book. And tell them to, to get it and help them 
get better marriage and better relationships. Okay, you, uh, thank you, Terrence. And, and folks, for those who don't know, you can get our marriage book at jollymarriage.com, jollymarriage.com. Please go see our TED Talk. It will bless you. It will encourage you, jollymarriage.com. Okay, so what if you end up, you get cornered and someone asks, it involves you in a, ask a, a controversial or, 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 or a sensitive question. Hmm. You know, that reminds me. Oh, so I, so I have two answers for that. Number one, oh, hold that point. I'm going to excuse myself to the bathroom. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that was good, D. That was hold good. That then, if you're like, mm, so you got a couple of choices, you can, oh, hold that point. Okay. I'll, excuse, I'll, I'll be back. And depending upon the size <laughs> of the environment, you can circle a little more than. Or you can say, hmm, you know, that reminds me of another point. You can pivot. Pivot. You, you can do the bathroom thing or you can do the pivot thing. How about that? Those I are love it. I've I learned. love it. Those are things I've learned over the years because, you know, people want to, they want to engage you. They want to get you, get you in the drama, the family drama. They want you to be part of the family, <laughs> the family drama. That's it. <laughs> or the pivot is it. You know, that reminds me of another one. You know, so and so, or you have to, but you have to practice it. You have to go with some ideas in your head as to and how make you're up your mind. You're not, and you're of, not going to say anything negative about anybody. Sometimes they try and draw you in, like Batman hit my hand, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Don't do that. that? Batman yeah. hit my hand. You didn't ever do that in school. Yeah. Okay, so here's what you do. Two people have a little oh, issue, oh, and one person gets a minute and say, Batman hit my hand, and pop, hit the other person, and then they start fighting. Which is elementary school? Yeah, that's elementary school. <laughs> Batman hit my hand, pop, and pop. I know, anybody ever heard of that? I never heard of such a thing. Yeah. And that's how they get people fighting. And they say, ooh, fight, fight, fight. Everybody you knows. I, I didn't grow up like that. No, you didn't grow up in that neighborhood. <laughs> You grew up in a very sheltered experience. <laughs> I grew up in the city. Lord have in mercy. In the city. Mm -mm, mm -mm, All right. Mm -mm. What else? Mm -mm. We, we got four minutes left. We can't get to all okay, this. Okay. We have to do this in two parts because this is a very profound point. I do want to take a moment to say, though, in our book, we talk about how you have to have a no drama. Leave the drama with your mama, chapter number five. And the drama is, you, if you're dating, we recommend you watch for the drama early because if you see it early, you'll see it again. Both husbands and wives can create drama. See, people talk about drama queens. They can be drama kings as well. well. And then there are family issues. So when you have family issues, you must make a deci decision that you will not participate in drama. I think you have to make that decision before you don't. That's right. So when you get when you get get there and you get out the car, you made up your mind. This is how I'm going to be, and I will be above the fray. Let me read some D wrote in her her segment. Oh. Drama is a choice. That's what I want people to hear. Once you understand it, which is what you just said, you make up your mind. Drama is a choice. Once you understand that, you realize drama is never necessary. And so she goes in a great detail of a, of a story. We don't have time for it. We, we only have two minutes left. Look, we want to make sure everybody knows that we're going to be doing a series of a marriage events with a company called Code M, which is a great magazine I write a co column for. We were going to do one in Cleveland on the 29th, but they pushed it back. But we will. I will be in Martha's Vineyard. We're trying to put together a one-man show on the 9th of August in Martha's Vineyard. Uh, if you're going to be in the Martha's Vineyard area, you might want to know more about that. But we want to know. Let you know. Do you think everyone knows where Martha's Vineyard is? Who in knows? Massachusetts. Oh. Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. But we will be hopefully doing a traveling show with Code M with these marriage events. Okay, so they're working out the details now. And we hope to have that some information on that. Next thing is we want everybody to go. If you haven't gotten the book, go get the book at Jolly Mary. But even if you haven't bought the book, go get a free chapter at Jolly Mary and watch the TED Talk. Watch the TED Talk, the, how to never, ever argue again in marriage. 
simple, only about 12 minutes, not, not 12 minutes, mm -hmm. but it's profoundly impactful. So many people have said it has it impacted their marriages. If you get the book, get two copies, one for each of you and one for you and your significant other if you're not married, because there's a chapter in that book for people who are not yet married. And then use the principles. We want to save a million marriages, enhance a million marriages, and we want you to prosper and have great success. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, many people were asking about my one-man show. It was a remarkable event, uh, great success. We're very grateful to the Washington Post, Cortland Malloy, the iconic columnist, who came to see the show and wrote a terrific feature article about me and the show and my story. If you have not seen it, I think it's on thecomebackshow.com, thecomebackshow.com. You can see the article. Well, the four shows that we planned are done. They're, they're done. They're in the books. And we are planning our next step now. I don't know what it is yet. So we're working out the detail. We've got to. So we want to say thank you to Emory Fellowship. Emory Fellowship. Who provided the space. They were wonderful. To Incredible. Work. Emory Fellowship is, is a United Methodist Church. Yes, but a unique United Methodist Church. Go ahead. You want to say Because. Go ahead. No, you finish. Because they have a strong community component. Right. They have a, a, a great pastor, Joe Daniels, who has a real, real heart for the community. And they've just built a 99 unit affordable housing around the church, around an amazing property. Great to connect it to the church so people have housing. They, they renovated the whole church and built this sanctuary that looks like a theater. Hmm. And it's phenomenal, fabulous. And it was a great venue. And they could not have been nicer. Their whole team could not have been nicer. So we want to thank. So we're very, very grateful. They are, for and they're located for those who might want a good experience to go vi visit them. It's at 6100 Georgia Avenue Northwest. 6100 Georgia Avenue. Tell them we sent you. Hope you'll have a great week. We are on our way to the National Speakers Association Convention in uh, Orlando this weekend. And all my friends, Les Brown and Della Toro McNeil. And uh, Brian Tracy and uh, Nito Cobain, the great speakers, will be there. So we'll be there for the next week. Uh, but we'll see you next Monday night. All right? Yeah, I have a great day, a great week, a great a weekend. On and, purpose. On purpose. And remember, your best is yet to come. This is Dr. Willie Jolly. This is Dee Taylor Jolly. And we're going to go out with my music from my one-man show, Close to You. Jolly out. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you.